Hey guys, Mac here again. I have a real quick one for you today. I watch one of my friends systematically destroy their laptop trying to get a bit of installer software working on their machine. And it occurred to me that there's something in Windows that is really handy for things like that. Something called the Windows Sandbox. I thought I'd show you guys what it is. Firstly, let's get it installed. It's pretty easy to do. What you want to do is find your turn Windows features on or off. If you move down that list, you should see it at the bottom there. There you go, Windows Sandbox. So select OK, let it install, and I'll show you what it does. Now bear in mind it's only supported on the Professional or Enterprise Edition, although there is a hack to install this on the home. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So let's get this machine rebooted, and I'll show you what the Windows Sandbox is all about. So we've got it installed, and I've rebooted the machine. So let's fire up the Windows Sandbox, and we can have a look at what it actually is. So we should find it in the menu here. There we go. Now the first time you run it, it can take a, a couple of minutes, so let's just wait for this. There we go. I told you it does take a, a little while the first time you use it. Now, what this has given us is a single Windows 10 virtual machine. Now, in this machine, it is protected from the environment of your main computer, so you can actually test things. So. Just for the sake of example, if I wanted to test Chrome, I could actually download and install Chrome in here. Pretty sure that's what people use Microsoft Edge for, to download and install Chrome. I don't think they use it for anything else. There we go. Now we have a Windows 10 virtual machine with Chrome in it. Now the advantage of this is you can actually use this environment for testing whatever you want. So in my situation earlier that I spoke about a colleague of mine destroying their laptop trying to get a, an installer to work properly, if it had done it in this sandbox, he wouldn't have affected his laptop at all. He could have got it right in this environment and then used it on his local machine. Now, even though this is a virtual machine, it's not a full virtual environment. What it is, it's a single event of Windows 10. Now, when I close down or get rid of this machine, it'll be gone. It's gone forever. So to show you what I mean, you can see here that we've got Chrome installed, and I'm going to stop this. You'll get the message, are you sure you want to close Windows Sandbox? Once Windows Sandbox is closed, all of its content will be discarded and permanently lost. That's a really important point, because as soon as I do this, that's gone. Now, if I fire up the Windows Sandbox again, There we go. Now you can see that we're back to where we worked, exactly where we were to start with. There's no Chrome installed. It is a fresh machine. So what would you use this for? Well, like I just said a few minutes ago, it's a really great way to test things on a machine without actually risking damaging it. So you can try a bit of software, make sure it's what you want before you actually go and install it on your main machine. Now, of course, you can actually set up a proper virtual machine using Hyper-V. Perhaps I'll do a separate video on that. But this, I just thought it was really useful, so I thought I'd quickly show you it. So let's get rid of that. Now, just to throw a bit of inception in here, we're running on a Windows 10 machine, but what I'm gonna do is just show you something here. That Windows 10 machine that we were running and then which we ran the sandbox in was actually running in parallels on my iMac Pro. So it's really, really usable. It's really handy and it's a great little trick to be aware of. What, like I say, I'll put the link for hacking this into a copy of Windows 10 Home, but like anything you know that involves the word hacking, just be aware that if you do this and it breaks your machine, that's down to you, it's not me. It's only really supported on the Enterprise and Pro editions. But anyway, I hope you found that useful.